when you're finished with your reflection, take a look at the quote that we just put up on the board for you about classroom climate. Okay, so most of us have shoulder partners. Um, you guys can remain in your group of three and you guys will have face partners for right now. So what we're gonna do is take two minutes and we want you to talk to your shoulder or face partner about what a classroom climate is. What does that mean to you? Okay, two minutes. Okay, high five. Would anybody like to share out? What's a classroom climate? Uh, we were Thank you. About a community, or we use the word team a lot, and how you build that to be welcoming. And, and also, you know, your point about teachers that talk yeah. or, or say something about a student in the beginning of the year and say, oh, you've got Joe mm -hmm. Bob. Mm -hmm. And not falling. Everybody knows Joe Bob. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh -huh. be welcoming and not have these preconceived ideas. Love it. Love it. And that's so true. Because, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's, it's Joe Bob. Or what, yeah. That just <laughs> yeah. Whether it's Joe Bob, we all know, we all know a Joe Bob. Um, or whether it's even like siblings, mm -hmm. right? So like, you know, somebody had the, the big brother and he was like, you know, a rock star and then the little brother may have some issues and like don't no preconceived notions. And it's hard, mm -hmm. we're human, right? But just, you know, you try to avoid that. And good, good climate, we want a sunshiny yep. climate. That's <laughs> right. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Anybody else, any thoughts on classroom climate? Yes. Um, we talked about just building relationships with your yes. students. Yes. Um, I feel like that, I personally feel like that's the foundation of classroom management because once you get to know them, you establish trust, openness, you know their interests, you can base your lessons off their interests. Um, so it's kind of just, and they want to please you, they want to please their classmates, so I kind of just see that Do as Do you have lot. any ideas on how to learn more about them? Um, just like through icebreaker games. Icebreaker. Just one of, mm -hmm. um, I love to talk to my students when we're walking in the hallway, like I'm not that stay quiet in the hallway. No, I'll try to pick somebody every day and be like, oh, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in those moments as well, you um, learn about them. And our school, the first mm -hmm. week of school, you have to sit with your kids at lunch. And mm -hmm. just also picking a couple of them to sit with you at lunch, that kind of stuff, like the little moments. I, I, like I, I do I too. Warms my heart, yes. Yes. That extra minute that you take to talk to the student and ask about their baseball game or, you know, they just had a new, they got a new kitten, whatever it is, that shows them that you care. You're building that rapport. And once you build that rapport, they'll do anything for you, you know, and that classroom management piece becomes less of an issue and more learning takes place at that point. Um, so speaking of building relationships, this is where I got a little bit confused earlier because I'm so excited about the scientist that we are going to hear. He has some great insights on uh, building relationships. So we're gonna, we're gonna listen to him for a couple minutes. You're just in time. I believe I've isolated the algorithm for making friends. <laughs> Sheldon, there is no algorithm for making friends. Uh -oh, hear him out. If he's really onto something, we could open a booth at Comic-Con, make a fortune. <laughs> See, my initial approach to Kripke had the same deficiencies as those that plagued Stu the Cockatoo when he was new at the zoo. <laughs> Stu the Cockatoo? Yes. He's new at the zoo. <laughs> it's a terrific book. I've distilled its essence into a simple flow chart that will guide me through the process. Have you thought about putting him in a crate while you're out of the apartment? <laughs> Hello, Kripke. Yeah, Sheldon Cooper here. It occurred to me that you hadn't returned any of my calls because I hadn't offered any concrete suggestions for pursuing our friendship. Yeah, perhaps the two of us might share a meal together. Yeah, I see. Well, then perhaps you'd have time for a hot beverage. Popular choices include tea, coffee, cocoa. 
I see. No, 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 wait, don't hang up yet. But what about a recreational activity? I bet we share some common interests. You tell me an interest of yours. You, really? On actual horses? <laughs> tell me another interest of yours. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have no desire to get in the water till I absolutely have to. <laughs> Another interest of yours. Uh oh, he's stuck in an infinite loop. I can fix it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But it's interesting, but isn't ventriloquism by definition a solo activity? <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell me another interest of yours. Hmm. Is there any chance you like monkeys? <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with you? Everybody likes monkeys. <laughs> Hang on, Kripke. A loop counter and an escape to the least objectionable activity. Howard, that's brilliant. I'm surprised you saw that. <laughs> Gee, why can't Sheldon make friends? <laughs> All right, Kripke, that last interest strikes me as the least objectionable, and I would like to propose that we do that together tomorrow. Yes, I'll pay. <laughs> All right, goodbye. All right. Time to learn rock climbing. <laughs> okay, so there is no algorithm for building relationships. We know relationships are so vital for our students. We want them to want to come to school. Um, you know, if you notice, once again, we showed you a clip. We prefaced it, right, by telling you we're talking about building relationships. Three minutes kind of, you know, came together. Why do we show you this? You know, very short, you were engaged. If it was much longer, you know, we would start to lose some, uh, some engagement here. Okay, so moving on with effective relationships, getting to know what their interests are and backgrounds. We had some people mention classroom meetings, having conversations, having lunch with them. What are their interests and how can we incorporate that into their education? Okay, establishing rapport and understanding. Show them that you care. Okay, we've had students, um, you know, that have sporting events, and I've heard teachers that would actually, you know, attend them. Um, even just asking, hey, you know, I heard you had a game on Saturday, how'd it go? You know, and they, they know that you care, you're asking about them specifically. So just really establishing that rapport, um, displaying objectivity and control. Okay, so even if there are times, because there will be times, that, you know, things don't go as planned or, you know, a student acts out or something happens during your lesson that you weren't expected, you know, just kind of plan for that and be mindful. We're not yelling, we're not losing our cool, you know, we want them to emulate our behavior. Um, and I always think of, you know, as a teacher walking in the hallway, you could tell a lot about the teacher's management style by how the kids you know, would be walking. So not that they have to be perfectly in a straight line and quiet, but you could tell the kids that were loud in the hallway and the teacher was yelling while they were talking and you can just imagine, you know, what the whole classroom environment might be like rather than, you know, a class that would just be calm and the teacher, oh, thank you, Johnny, or, you know, just in a certain way. And not that that's always true of a classroom, but just, you know, how you are handling yourself shows the students how they should be handling themselves. I love that. And, you know, one of the things I know you've seen it too, because we're so much alike and I use it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Basically the same person, so. <laughs> but um, and it was on like Dateline or like one of the big ones, and it was an elementary school teacher, and they had this little thing on the front of their door, and it had like a fist pump, and it had like a high five, and it had mm -hmm. a hug, and it had like a pat on the back, and, and that's it, just the cues and the symbols. And so the students would come in and they would slap which one they wanted from the teacher, and if it was like a hug, the teacher goes, hey Johnny, you know, and a hug, up. and then if it was a fist bump, you know, they would they would touch the fist bump, oh, we want a fist bump today, and they could change it every morning, and come in, hey man, how's a fist bump? And it was so mm -hmm. awesome. I did see that. Yeah, so um, that's just like another another way that you can have those reflective mm -hmm. relationships. And you know, depending on their mood, every morning they can change it up. So. Absolutely. Voice and choice. Yes, <laughs> love it, love it. Um, so that is on page nine at the bottom. Uh, some ways just to build effective relationships with your students. So we're going to give you guys two minutes to share some favorite ways to build relationships. Talk to each other. How do you build relationships in your classroom? Two minutes. Go. High five. Okay, we are going to give you a moment to write down some of the things that you guys talked about, but kind of keep in mind, we don't want to be friends with our students. 
Okay, we want them to like us and to like coming to school, but we need to have that authority role and still maintain that control in a friendly manner. So just kind of keeping in mind that that is not a goal. And if we, you do become friends with students, it will just backfire. So we want to steer away from that. Okay, so we'll give you about a minute for reflection time. It is on the top of page 10. Anything that you heard in your groups? Okay, high five. As